Russia has always been known for its diversity and hugeness. A massive empire it was with millions of people who spoke hundreds of different languages. The country of Russia is a beautiful country with beautiful people. The capital city of Russia is Moscow. The country is also home to most billionaires in the world. Russia is also known for its culture and traditions. Russia is full of unique natural sights, shimmering lakes and pretty mountains. The country is covered in scenic beauty. The Kuronian Spit, a thin curvy and dune which separates the Kuronian Lagoon from the coast of Baltic Sea, is one of the prettiest sights to see. The Kaliningradskaya Oblast is a UNESCO World Heritage. The beautiful Man Pupuner Plateau, where one can see giant stone statues in the northern Urals, is a sight to wonder and awe. With some wondrous places to see, the country also has a gory past. Not many years back, the population of Russia went through centuries of pain, fear and terror. Russia has come a long way to be the country that it is today. The Russian Revolution was a fight for freedom and fight to be relieved from an imperial rule. In the last few centuries, Russia had seen the rule of the Tsars. People were tired of their rule. The aristocrats and noble people were draining the serfs and people from the lesser classes. Although there were some Tsars who brought about some reforms, but a couple of good Tsars did not seem to do any good for Russia. The society was not balanced, there was extremes, extremely rich and extremely poor. Poverty prevailed through Russia. There was an air of theft and violence which prevailed throughout. The elite class made profits even without working on them, while the serfs worked hard yet got poorer by the day. Even though in 1861 the serfs were freed and given small amounts of land they had to pay the government a specific amount, they slept to debts. Techniques of agriculture were old and ancient and the yield was not satisfactory and illiteracy was nothing less than a big mountain in front of the way to progress for these serfs. The condition of the peasants in southern and western parts of Russia was a little better as they had bigger farms. This angered the other peasants and this frustration increased when they were tried to control by the government. The population increased and the land ran out. The number of peasants increased who moved to the cities in search of jobs and the population of the cities overflowed. The wages were poor and the life they lived was nothing less than dogs and the government did not bring about any reforms. These worker-class people slowly started protesting. In the dawn of the Russian Civil War, the ruling Tsar, Nicholas II, did no good for the people. Everything was in control, including the press. There was a group of police who were assigned to be on guard for those who protested. There was a myriad of reasons for the rise of the peasants and the working class. They were tried and all wanted freedom from the upper class. The commoners of Russia rose against the elite class and civil war happened. There was the Red Army of the Bolsheviks who fought for freedom and comprised mostly of the working class and peasants and then there was the White Army or the anti-Bolsheviks who longed to have the rule of the Tsars. Amongst these two main oppositions there were several smaller groups who took sides in the army. The Russian Civil War was not kept within the boundaries, many neighboring countries also leapt in and took sides. Amongst war and rebellion, millions lost lives and it was long before Russia could see peace. Foundation of the Revolution Once the Tsar, Nicholas II of Russia, was stepped down, Russian provincial government was formed in 1917. Fearing that the actions of anti-Bolsheviks would bring back the rule of the Tsars, the Ural Regional Soviet decided to execute the Romanov's entire family. In the execution, Tsar Nicholas II, his wife, five children and some of their close accomplices who went along with them in the exile were executed. However, the killing of the Tsarina Alexandra, her kids and others were not disclosed. The murder of the Tsar itself caused havoc among the anti-Bolsheviks. Red Army after the Bolshevik Revolution, which happened in 1917, the Communist government created the Red Army. The Imperial Army and Navy of Russia, along with the royal institutions, which were set up by the Tsars, were degenerated in the outburst of the Russian Revolution of 1917. 
The Council of People's Commissars formed a Workers' and Peasants' Red Army, which was completely voluntary. The Russian government made it compulsory for the peasants and workers to be given military training. The founder of Red Army is Leon Trotsky, and he held the post of People's Commissar from 1918 to November of 1924. Since the army comprised of peasants and workers, a dependable and capable officer was difficult to locate. Trotsky militarized the earlier officers from the Imperial Army. More than 50,000 served in the Red Army, most of them who were faithful to the Soviet government. The troops were monitored closely by the commissars, who were political advisers. The families of Imperial officers who refused to serve the Red Army were taken hostages to ensure they remained loyal to the new government. Young officers who joined the Russian Civil War from the training schools were more tough to be more trustworthy. Anti-Bolshevik Movement Anti-Bolsheviks were referred to as Whites. Revolts from the Whites began when the Bolsheviks revolted and the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk augmented their anger. The Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was a peace treaty which was forced on the Bolshevik government. The treaty said that Bolshevik Russia should give up Baltic states to Germany. They were to become vassal states under the young German prince. They also had to give up Kars Oblast to the Ottoman Empire and make Ukraine independent. The Bolshevik government also had to pay 6 billion German gold marks in compensation. Anti-Bolshevik groups arose both inside and outside Russia and revolted against the newly established government. The Association of the Whites comprised of Republicans, middle-class citizens, landowners, liberals, pro-monarchists, conservatives and reactionaries. Every person of the Confederation had joined the group voluntarily. There are also at times known as the White Army and were led by General Denikin, General Yudenich and Admiral Kolchak. The White Army had control of most of the Russian Empire till the war lasted. The Ural region, Far East, Volga region and Siberia were all at remote locations and favorable for the anti-Bolsheviks. The Whites set up many organizations in the main cities of these territories and most of them were set up secretly. The French Republic and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland supported the Whites and supplied them with arms. The main things that worried the foreign countries were Russians forming an alliance with the Germans. Bolsheviks would threaten not to pay back the loans taken by Imperial Russia and communist ideas would spread in other countries. Several countries supported the actions of the Whites. The French and the British had a big hand in supporting Russia in the World War I and the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk showed that the Germans would be taking the cherry on the cake. There was an Allied intervention of the French and British forces which clashed against the Bolsheviks. Finland declared itself independent from Russia in December 1917 and Lithuania, Second Polish Republic, Estonia and Latvia formed their own armies after the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was obliterated. Sequence of Events of the War The entire civil war can be distributed in three periods. The first period started from the revolution to the truce. The signing of Treaty of Brest-Litovsk has already led to involvement of Allied forces. Even some of the German officers supported the anti-Bolsheviks in fear of facing them. The Red Army snatched Central Asia from the Provisional Government and White Army. A communist base was set up in Stap and Turkestan, where two million Russian population resided. The fights which happened during the first period were usually in small groups and different areas. In the second period of the war, General Denikin led the White Army from the south, General Yudenich marched with his army from the northwest, while Admiral Kolchak and his army came from the east. All of them were successful in pushing back the Red Army on these frontiers. The Red Army faced another hit in July 1919 when the Black Army, led by Nestor Makhno, attacked them and the anarchists united power in Ukraine. The Red Army was reformed by Trotsky and the military alliance with anarchists was ended. Kolchak and his army were stopped by the Red Army in June and after many confrontations, the Red Army along with Black Army, who was offended by the supply lines of the Whites, defeated Yudenich's and Dekinin's army.
by November. The third period was more dense and was a protracted cordon of what was left for the White's army in Crimea. Pyotr Nikolaevich Rango was also part of the anti-Bolshevik party and he gathered the left army of the Whites and faced the Red Army and the Black Army, but the Red Army drove the Red Army and Black Army towards the south. Further, what was left of the army were banished to Constantinople in November of 1920. Conflict The October Revolution is also known as the Red October or Bolshevik Revolution. The Bolsheviks directed the Red Guards, who later on became the Red Army, were asked to seize Petrograd. The armed forces immediately began their work and started to take over the villages and cities. The Russian Constituent Assembly was dissolved by the Bolsheviks in 1918 and Workers' Council or Soviet was set up as the new government of Russia. Beginning of the Anti-Bolshevik Revolutions the initial attempts to gain back power from the Bolsheviks was made in the month of October 1917 in the kerensky krasnov revolt. There was another mutiny which happened in Petrograd and was known as Junkan Mutiny, but the Red Guards crushed the revolt immediately. The earlier groups who revolted against the Communists were Cossacks, armies, who had professed loyalty to the provisional government. The main officers were General Semenov of the Siberian Cossacks and General Kaledin of the Don Cossacks. Even officers of the Imperial Army showed sign of repel. The Tsar's chief of staff, General Alexeyev, also started to form an army in Novocherkask. Most of the members of this small army were cadets, officers from the Imperial Russian Army. The Cossacks and the volunteers captured Rostov. In November of 1917, the Bolsheviks said that every nation under Imperial Russia should be given power of self-determination through the Declaration of Rights of Nations of Russia. The Bolsheviks began to take over the provisional government in Central Asia as the Turkestan Committee was formed in Tashkent. The Turkestan Committee was made up of Tsarist officers. The Bolsheviks had tried to take over the Tashkent Committee in September 1917, but they were unsuccessful and most of the Bolshevik leaders were arrested, but there was public turmoil because of which the leaders were released immediately. The Bolsheviks struck again in November 1917, and this time they were successful, mostly because the local working class supported them for this cause. After the provisional government was destroyed in Tashkent, the local Muslim aristocrats formed a government which was known as Kokand. The anti-Bolsheviks supported the Kokand government which was in place for many months because it remained isolated from the Bolshevik armies. The Bolsheviks captured the city of Ukraine on January 26, 1918. Treaty of Brest-Litovsk the Bolsheviks decided that they should make peace with Germany and Central Powers. The Central Powers consisted of Austria-Hungary, Germany, Bulgaria and Ottoman Empire, which was known as Quadruple Alliance. Lenin was told by his political enemies that if Russia would sponsor the German Emperor's foreign office, Russia would be allowed to withdraw from the World War I. There was an unsuccessful military campaign for World War I led by Alexander Kerensky, who was the then Minister of War for Russia. After the February Revolution in Russia, people were already frustrated and looking for peace, and this June offence was a wrong move by Kerensky. Moreover, the Russians were overthrown by the enemies. This havoc created made it even more important for Lenin to go ahead with the peace treaty. The British and French officials came all the way to Russia to convince them to continue in the war, but Russia was adamant and did not change their views. There was a truce signed between Central Powers and Russia on December 16, 1917. The Germans started the 11 Days War, or Operation Falschlag, in the Eastern Front on February 18, 1918. They faced no resistance by the Russians, because the Bolsheviks knew they wouldn't last long before the enemies. The Russians therefore agreed to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litvosk because they had to get out of the war, so they agreed to give away lands and money to the German Empire. Ukraine, South Russia and Caucasus, 1918 The Volunteer Army, anti-Bolsheviks from South Russia, also known as White Guard, 
pressurized by Soviet, started a journey of retreat on February 22, 1918 from Rostov towards Kuban so they could join forces with Cossacks and fight against the Bolsheviks. Rostov was taken back by the Soviets the next day. One of the important leaders of the anti-Bolsheviks, General Kornilov, was killed on April 13, 1918, and General Degnikin took his place. They fought and made their way through the Don, where the Cossacks were already fighting the Bolsheviks. A short-lived Baku Commune was established on April 13, 1918. The Germans, along with their troops, came to Poti on June the 8th for its Caucasus expedition. The Army of Islam, which was of the Ottomans, along with Azerbaijan Democratic Republic, chased the Germans out of Baku on July 26, 1918. In the month of June 1918, the White Army with 9,000 men began their Cuban campaign. Yekaterinoda was taken first, Armavir and Stvaropol followed next. The Red Army fell to the Whites and the entire Northern Caucasus was under the control of White Army by the beginning of 1919. General Danikin and P.N. Krasnov, who was the Ataman of the Don Cossacks, made an agreement which united their armies, of which Danikin was made the leader. This created the armed forces of South Russia. Central Asia, 1918 Kokand of Turkestan was supporting the White Army in Central Asia, and in February 1918 they were overthrown by the Red Army. Even though the Bolsheviks became strong in Central Asia, they were burdened with other problems. The Allied force of Britain and White Army were the biggest problem for them. Lieutenant Colonel Bailey, Major General Dunsterville, and General Mallison were three great leaders of the Britain who were sent to Russia to help the White Army. Although the Red Army faced setbacks in their work, none of these three British officers seemed to stand before them and were driven out soon. The Red Army continued to expand their influence in the parts of Central Asia and they were quite successful in doing so. Even the first regional congress of Russian Communist Party gathered in Tashkent in the month of June 1918 to back the Bolshevik Party's presence in Central Asia. Siberia Eastern Russia and Far East of Russia 1918. Czechoslovak Legion began in May 1918, and in June the Legionnaires took control of Chelyabinsk. The Bolsheviks in Petropavlovsk, which is present Kazakhstan, and Omsk were ousted by the Russian officers. Most of the Trans-Siberian Railroad between Ural and Lake Baikal were under the White Army. Siberia was also freed of the Bolsheviks. By the end of July, the White Army moved towards west and took over Ekaterinburg on July 26, 1918. Just before Ekaterinburg was taken, the Bolsheviks assassinated the whole family of Tsar Nicholas II and their close accomplices so the Whites wouldn't get them and establish imperial rule once again in Russia. The Mensheviks, who were a result of a disagreement in the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party in 1904, supported the peasants who were battling against the Soviet for supplies of ration. They established committee of members of the Constituent Assembly, which they called Komoch. The Czechoslovak legions controlled much territory by July of 1918. They returned the lands and factories to their owners and established a combination of socialist and democratic measures. Lenin then sent many Petrograd workers to the Kazan front. Several reverses happened in the front and the war commissar of Bolshevik army instated harsh measures to avoid abandonments, unofficial extractions and revolts in within the Red Army. He went as far as implementing occasional death penalty for commissars who showed detachment from the Red Army. In the end, he was so tired of the soldiers who tried to leave the army that he gave orders to shoot anyone who was seen withdrawing from the battle line without authorization. The anti-Bolshevik forces in the east, comprised of the Siberian army of the provisional government, People's Army of Komuch and rebellious Cossacks of Siberia, Amur, Orenburg, Baikal, Ural, Usuri and Semirechye by the 1918 winters. The UFA Directorate had appointed General V. G. Boldirev to head the above forces. 
The White Army under Captain Capo had taken over Kazan on August 7, 1918, but the Red Army captured the region back on September 8, 1918. Samara and Simbersk fell soon after, and the White Army moved back east to Orenburg and Ufa. A new war officer, Admiral Kolchak, became dominant in Omsk, and in a coup of November 18, 1918, he was declared the supreme ruler of Russia. His rule did not last long, as although he supported the White Army, he did not like the fellow supporters such as Polish 5th Rifle Division and Czechoslovak Legion. He was captured and handed over to the Bolsheviks, who killed him along with his Prime Minister, Viktor Pepeljajev, on February 7, 1920. Latvia, Estonia and Petrograd Estonia managed to chase the Red Army from their territories in January 1919. Riga was taken back on May 22, 1919, by the Baltic landwehr from the Red Latvian riflemen, but within a month's time, they were defeated by the Estonian 3rd Division and established Republic of Latvia. General Nikolai Yudenich now had an organized army in northwest Estonia with the help of British and locals. He took 20,000 men and tried to take Petrograd. The biggest plus point which Yudenich had was six British tanks, the sight of which the enemies dreaded. On October 19, 1919, Yudenich and his army were in the outskirts of Petrograd. Trotsky was not willing to give up with a fight, hence raised as many soldiers as he could, and in some weeks the Red Army would triple the size of Yudenich's army. The White Army under Yudenich were running short of supplies and decided to move back. Although the Finnish general Mannerheim decided to help the White Army, but he did not get ample support and the White Army was left to their own. Most of them went into exile because of the treat of Tartu. Central Asia 1919 Britain had withdrawn most of their armies out of Central Asia by February of 1919. Even though Red Army had a strong hold over Central Asia, they faced continuous assaults in European Russia because of which Tashkent lost communications with Moscow. This had weakened the functioning of Red Army in Central Asia, but it did not weaken their spirits and continued to fight to get more support for Bolshevik Party. They had the second regional conference in the month of March in Central Asia and a regional bureau of Muslim organization of the Russian Bolshevik Party was established. The Bolsheviks tried to impress the locals and gave them the impression that they had the ability to maintain peace with the people of Central Asia. By November 1919, all communication problems which were a threat to the Red Army were removed as the Red Army was successful in the northern areas of Central Asia. The communication was strong once again and the Red Army overthrew the Whites and took control of Central Asia once again. Northern Russia, 1919 Along with the Americans, the British took Murmansk and Arkhangelsk. When Kolchak retreated in Siberia, the British also pulled out their troops before they could get trapped in the ports during winters. What remained of the white forces under Yevgeny Miller also emptied the whole area by February 1920. March 1919, the whites began their attacks on the Eastern Front. Ufa was taken back by March 13th. The Whites were stopped at the glazov chistopol buguma buguruslan Sharlik line. The Red Army also started their attacks against the forces of Kolchak in the end of April. Tukhachevsky was a very proficient commander who was leading the Red Army. On May 26, 1919, the Red Army under him captured Elabuga. Soon, Izevsk and Sarapu were also under their command. Both Red Army and the White Army kept advancing in different places and both faced victory and defeat. The Red Army became stronger and bigger than the White Army. The Reds were also able to take back the areas where they had lost to the White Army. The White Army drew back past Tobo and in September of 1919 they launched a campaign to take back Tobo. This was also the last attempt of the Whites. The Red Army reacted by counter-attacking on October 14, 1919. The Whites retreated to the east. Omsk was taken over by the Red Army on November 14, 1919. 
Kolchak did not have any control over the White Army, and by December, the Whites did not exist in Siberia. The retreat of the White forces was for three months, till February 1920. Those who survived the wrath of Red Army reached Chita after they crossed Baikal, where they joined the forces of Atom and Semenov. South Russia, 1919 There is no doubt that the Cossacks did well in terms of fighting and taking over territories, but their organizing and capitalizing powers were weak, which is why by 1919 they were short of supplies. Their disorganization was also the cause of their fall when the Antonov of Senko counter-attacked with the Bolshevik army in January 1919. The Red Army captured Kiev on February 3, 1919. General Denikin, however, grew stronger, and in Donbass, when the Red Army and White Army were face to face with each other, there was a fierce battle. Denikin's armed force of South Russia, AFSR, had managed to clean northern Caucasus from the Red Army, and they moved towards Tsaritsyn. Beginning of May, the armed forces of South Russia pounced on all the fronts from Dnieper to the Volga, and they were victorious in most of the battles. The French came to help the Whites, but they hardly participated in the war, so they went back on April 8, 1919. Odessa and Crimea also bid adieu to the Red Army by June. Belgorod and Karnov were also taken over by Denikin and his army. Simultaneously, White Army under Ragnall also took over Tsaritsyn on June 17, 1919. A couple of days later, on June 20, 1919, Denikin issued an order which is known as the Moscow Directive, which read his order stating all the AFSR units to buckle up for an offensive to take over Moscow. In 1919, the British troops had already withdrawn, yet Great Britain continued to support the White Army with food, weapons, cash, ammunition and sometimes advisers. One of the British mayors, Mayor Ewan Cameron Bruce, had taken the responsibility to run a British tank mission while they were assisting the Whites. He single-handed captured the guarded city of Tsaritsyn using a single tank in the Battle of June 1919, for which he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order. Under this mission, 40,000 Red Army prisoners were taken. It was one of the notable events in the Russian Civil War. The White Army now moved towards Saratov, but Trotsky smelled danger if Ragnall and Kolchak united. Kolchak's forces withdrew in the east in the months of June and July, and Red Army soldiers were now free from dangers which they could have faced in Siberia. They now proceeded to meet the forces of Denikin. Denikin's forces were the strongest and posed greatest threat if they reached Moscow. The Red Army spread out and began fighting at all fronts. On August 30, 1919, the Reds had to retreat from Kiev. They lost Oral and Kursk. Konstantin Mamontov headed the army of Cossacks, which was known as Don Army. The Don Army moved toward Voronezh, but they were defeated by Tukhachevsky's forces on October 24, 1919. The Red Army under Tukhachevsky's now proceeded towards the volunteer army of General Denikin, which was one of the greatest threats to the Red forces. The White Army movement against the Soviets was at its peaks in the month of September 1919. Denikin's army was precariously overstretched. There was no stability in the White Army and lacked depth and stability. It had become more of what can be said as a series of patrols and random groups who advanced slowly without any reserves. They were short of new recruits, ammunition and artillery. In the months of October and November 1919, the army of Denikin was conclusively defeated. Kiev was taken back by the Red Army on December 17th, and the Cossacks were defeated, who escaped and went towards the Black Sea. Although the White Army was retreating towards east and the center, they did succeed in pushing back the revolutionary insurrectionary army of Ukraine, which was the anarchist Black Army and was under Nestor Makhno. The Black Army was ousted from southern Ukraine and Crimea. Moscow was unwilling to assist Makhno, his Black Army and the other anarchist forces in Ukraine with arms. The main body of the White Forces, which comprised of volunteers, White Army and Don Army, moved back towards the Don to Rostov, while the smaller body, which consisted of the Odessa and Kiev troops, moved back to Crimea and Odessa. 
The smaller groups succeeded in protecting Odessa and Crimea from the Bolsheviks in the winters of 1919 to 1920. Ukraine, South Russia and Kronstadt, 1920 to 1921. The armed forces of South Russia were already retreating towards Don to Rostov. General Denikin thought that he would hold the journey of Don and rest before reorganizing the troops. Unfortunately, this did not happen and they were unable to hold the Don area and began retreating across Kuban towards Novorossiysk in the month of February 1920. This careless clearing of Novorossiysk was an unpleasant occasion for the White Army. The Allied forces came in for help and around 40,000 men were evacuated from Novorossiysk to Crimea in ships without any heavy equipments or horses. 20,000 men were left back, some of who were taken prisoners by the Red Army, while some disseminated. This evacuation came hard upon Denikin, who stepped down from his post and the Council designated Ragnall as the new Commander-in-Chief for the White Army. Ragnall helped in resisting the spirit of the disheartened troops and removed the army which could face the Red Army with the same enthusiasm and zeal once again. Throughout 1920, this force continued to remain unorganized on in Crimea. Bolshevik government signed a political and military agreement with the anarchists of Ukraine and their leader Nestor Macron. Once an official pact happened, the Black Army swept the white forces of Ragnar in the southern Ukraine and forced them to move back. The result of which was that Ragnar was unable to capture the grain harvest for the year. Hindered by the Black Army in his efforts to strengthen his hold, Ragnar moved towards the north and attacked. The Red Army had been defeated in the Polish-Soviet War of 1919-1920 and Ragnar wanted to take advantage of this situation. The Red Army did not let this happen and Ragnall's forces were forced to move back in Crimea in the month of November 1920. Both the Black and the Red Army had pursued the White forces. What remained of Ragnall and his army were evacuated on November 14, 1920 from Crimea to Constantinople. This was the last tussle in southern Russia between the Red Army and the White Army. Once the armies of Ragnall were defeated, the Red Army disclaimed the Treaty of 1920 that it had made with Nestor Makhno and immediately attacked the Black Army. The campaign which was started to dissolve the anarchists of Ukraine began with an attempt to assassinate Nestor Makhno. The Bolsheviks used the Cheka agents for the job. This act of the Bolshevik government to use Cheka agents angered the anarchists. They began a naval mutiny in Kronstadt, which soon followed by the revolt of peasants. The Red Army continuously attacked the anarchist forces, and the supporters of Black Army increased in fierceness during the year of 1921. Far East and Siberia, 1920-1922 The army of Admiral Kolchak had crumbled in Siberia. Once Kolchak lost the command over Omsk, he appointed General Grigory Semyonov as the Siberian head of the White Army. Kolchak's fate had something else in store, even though he was promised safe passage to Irkutsk, he was held captive and handed over to the Bolsheviks, who after a nine-day interrogation had him and his Prime Minister shot. Their bodies were thrown in the Angara River just before the White Army could arrive. What remained of the Kolchak's army joined forces with Semyonov's troops when they reached Transbaikalia and formed the Far Eastern Army. The Far Eastern Army was supported by the Japanese and with their help they had Chita under their control. However, as the Japanese withdrew their soldiers from Transbaikalia, Semyonov was in no position to hold back the Red Army. In the month of November 1920, he was pushed back by the Red Army and he had to hide in China. The Japanese had planned to take over Amur Krai, but they withdrew their armies because of the Bolshevik armies were getting stronger in the far east of Russia. Vladivostok was taken by the Red Forces on October 25, 1922, and the provisional Priamur government was quenched. Post-war The Red Army had won the war in Russia, Belarus, Tuva, Ukraine, Mongolia and South Caucasus, and Soviet Union was established in Russia. Countries who were looking for independence, such as Estonia, Lithuania, Finland, Poland and Latvia, were free. The Red Army continued to be attacked by the Islamic guerrillas, who were known as Basmachi. 
the Communist Party had to uphold their group till 1934 because there were continued revolts which happened throughout the city even after the Reds had won and established the Bolshevik government. Many Bolsheviks saw the Communist rule as a permanent solution for Russia and her people, but the policies that Lenin had imposed and the severity to which the people were, as dirt here, led to the unpopularity of the Bolsheviks. Even after the war, there was unrest in the society. There were seven million children who roamed the Russian streets after the war. This was a result of Great War and the Russian Civil War. The factories were destroyed, bridges crumbled, machines broken, mines flooded, cattle and raw material plundered. Epidemic broke out and there was famine. None of the industries seemed to prosper, there was no production at all. The Russian economy was still. About 125,000 red soldiers and 175,500 white soldiers, along with 450,000 military officers, died in the Civil War and Polish-Soviet War. When the Red Terror was executed, there were about 250,000 died. About 10,000 were executed and 28,000 additional dead in February 1922. Around 1,000 Jews were killed by the White Army and 300,000 to 500,000 Cossacks were dead. There were millions more and there is no count of the lives that were taken in the five years of unrest in Russia. The misery of the Russians did not end with a civil war. They had to endure much more. Besides the political instability, the natural calamities befell the Russian citizens, engulfing millions more. The country now has a federal semi-presidential form of government. The Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Ministers and the Federal Ministers are what the government of Russia is made of. The President is the chief executive of the government. Boris Yeltsin was elected directly as the first President of Russia in the year 1991. The current President of Russia is Vladimir Putin. The Russian Civil War is considered as one of the deadliest wars in history. There is a rough estimation of about 15 million people who were dead. Actual number of soldiers were few, there were more of common people who enrolled themselves for war. Bloodshed was the only sight in Russia. Although the Russian Civil War is the phase which is being discussed here, even after and before the Civil War, Russia was not at peace. Be the elite class or the serfs, everyone suffered the wrath of war. Today, Russia is one of the world powers whose political decisions have an effect on the entire world. With its capital as Moscow, Russia today stands rich, powerful and beautiful. Russia has had some of the most beautiful buildings and architects from its past, which still stand strong. It still has history entombed within a tourist's flock to see its past beauty.